Hello, good day, and welcome to the energy update for the week of October the 24th. I am recording, or 25th now, I guess. I This has been channeled for the past couple of days. I've been trying to record, the, or uh, trying to record this. I had this fully recorded yesterday, had no sound, just like the last one that I did. And um, I don't know why, but it had a lot of detail in it. And I can't reenact it. I can't bring it back because... I don't write them down. I don't pre-rehearse them. I don't edit these videos. They are as they channel through. So I'm coming in today and with hopes that we do get some sort of like channel message. So bear with me uh, as I as I bring in the energy of the divine and what it is that we are being told, what the energy is, what energy is happening out there. Now we do have a, um, I did have a, I did have a premonition. And it's been something that I recorded in yesterday's. Um, it kind of is something that I don't really always like to talk about, but it keeps coming back to me again. And it is about destruction. Um, and I keep seeing this big, like, I want to say like an explosion, uh, possibly like bomb type of like an explosion of something like a, just coming in. I feel like it is tied around the it is tied around the Middle East. Now we're all very aware that of what is happening in the Middle East. Do we all know all the details and the stories and what's going on? No, we get we get bits and pieces and we get objectives and views and opinions. And um I always pray for peace and I pray that we can seek and find peace and that we can come together as a human race and not be divided that we start to realize that we are all of the one, we exist in the one world, and for us to be able to live in the one world at peace. That's my that's my hope, my prayers. But what I keep seeing is it feels as if it is something that is directed towards more towards the Israel, because I keep seeing the people of Israel moving this morning, it came back to me again. I seen the parting of the seas this morning in a vision and I just see like the, the, the Red Sea, the opening of the Red Seas is what it, what it was. And I knew this was a Moses story and that I was channeling through this, that I was getting this premonition as if I was back in that time and seeing the whole experience of what was happening and getting to the other side. And it just felt like this, this need, this desire to move people, to move people, to get people moved. And as if something big was coming in towards Israel, I pray it is not as I see it, um, but something big, I pray this is a miracle instead of instead of something that is even, that can be catastrophic, but I am picking up some sort of catastrophic energy towards um, Israel. I also picked up um, some sort of conflict with the, um, with Iran as well that was coming through and it was so vivid and I don't even like to go there but it is in our energy and because it's in the energy I feel the conflicts and the wars and what we have happening so there is a lot of things that are taking place please don't unsubscribe because this is the beginning of the message this is not all that we have there is so much more and it is not sides at all um and I and I believe there is a um to be a resolution to be a resolution, we have to really, truly move beyond what our mind is telling us. We have to think about the children and the children of all is important. Um, hmm, okay, so that premonition, it did come back again today. I felt the need to speak of it, um, which also means safety. I feel like moving into safety now yesterday's felt very much like it was like we were being lectured like we were being schooled in some not scolded but being schooled in in life and it was a very powerful energy it spoke for about 39 minutes continual and so as of course i'm ramping up i'm letting it all come in i never know what's happening but okay so there is a lot of there is a lot of of like old past energy so immature emotional spiritual sense of a immaturity within self within the world within energy and it's really time to take a look into us being in relationship to others to ourselves 
to our self-prophecies of self-destruction, to our continual narratives and stories around other people. If I could say one thing is that the very first book I ever wrote is called More Than Existing. And what is happening right now is about the More Than Existing book. It is about us taking a look at the stories we live and exist in to open up our minds, our hearts, to take ownership, responsibility, and accountable for who we are today, not who we were in the past. Our ancestors may have had wisdom, they may have known things, but we have also evolved, we have grown, and we have moved beyond, so, or we should be moving beyond the, the stories of the past and holding holding on to that everyone of today is responsible for everything that happened years ago, 2000 years ago. When do we end the chains? When do the cycles break? When do we stop blaming the past for who we are and for how we are behaving today? We have, we have learned a lot of things. We have grown, we have evolved, and it is time for us to break free, to clear out that, because we are constantly and consistently being triggered by the systematic society, the world that we live in, that keeps us in the fear story, that keeps us in the re in resisting the possibility that we could create peace on earth. I turned on the news this morning. The first thing I seen was, oh, we're at the tipping point. And we're at, at the tipping point within our, you know, in our environment. And I'm like, that is not true. Instantly, I just heard the voice say, that is not a full truth. Is there pieces true? Yes. Is there a whole lot that is an objective? Yes. How many times do we try to, to, you know, how many times do you try to motivate somebody else through a fear story? How many times do you try to get manipulate people to do what you want them to do in relationships, in a personal relationships, how many times do you put the pouty lip on, the sad eyes, the doughy eyes? Oh, please. How many times have you done that in a relationship? How many times have you showed up in a relationship and, and start an argument and a fight just because you're, you got to feed the hungry, the, that hungry monster inside that sense of what is existing inside the biggest predator that we have is what exists within us that, that allows us to continue to feed into the stories that keep us divided from ourselves and from others. And it is time for us to clean up the actions, the reactions, the, you know, the responses we have. Imagine being that kid and there's your bedroom and you look into the bedroom, the mother opens the door and says, what a mess in here. And you've got stuff everywhere. And you're like, I like it this way, or it's just too much work to clean it up. And it's because you're looking at the whole mess instead of one little thing, instead of one thing, what is the one thing that could really truly get us to clean up the mess, to believe in ourselves, to, to put our faith and our trust back in self and believe in the self and what the self is capable of, to believe that we are capable of being able to care for our own lives, our own, that, you know, we're mature enough to be able to take care of our own finances, to take care of our own lives. Since when have we been, ha since when and how long ago have we now start to need to someone to tell us to put your mittens on when it's cold outside? That was, that was the way we were treated when we were children. We are not children, but we have, we have been sent backwards because we have learned to become dependent. So it's as if the whole world is codependent. So we have a whole codependency energy that is time to release. And for the world the, that we exist in, the energy is saying right now with the solar eclipse, with the solar, sorry, with the lunar eclipse happening with this ring of fire, with this shift that is going on and with the full moon energy, with the tides between the water, the air, and then the fire and that fire energy saying that it's time for us to really, truly look at the areas in our lives of where we have to take ownership, responsibility, become accountable for our own actions, for our own thoughts. Nobody creates your emotions, but you remember that just you. So when you want that, go back to the bedroom, go back to that little child, go back to the teenager that's in the room. What's the real reason why we don't want to clean up the room? Because I don't feel like it because I want to do something else, because I'm distracted, because I'm 
I'm too tired because I got other things happening. Why is it that we make excuses instead of saying exactly what we need to say, exactly what we feel? And why is it such a, why is it that we can deflect and reflect onto others, the things that we need to do for ourselves? There is not one person that is making you feel the way you're feeling besides for yourself. No matter what is happening, no matter what's going on around us, and it's time for us to break free of the puppet strings that has us tied to the illusions of living in the false realities, caught up in the false light of, of, of distractions that are keeping us away from the things that are most important, the things that are valuable, and to open our eyes, our hearts, and our ears to know that everything that you're receiving is coming from half, half truths, clickbaits, news, they, they filter, it is filtered, it is edited, it is spliced, and it is sliced. So you're only ever getting bits and pieces of truths. You're getting what the motive is to promote. Now, not blaming the world, because we have accepted it. Because why? Because as a society, as a world, we do it to ourselves. We accept the things that we can accept. We, we believe the things that only what we want to believe, only that that feeds the narrative. And often you don't want to open up your eyes and your hearts to see anything else because it is the story that feeds your story. It is the energy that feeds your story. It is that which keeps you content and happy. Imagine what would be the reason why we would clean up our bedroom? What would be the reason why we would want to clean up that mess? So that we can see the space so that we can have clarity, so that we can feel the sense of being motivated by something inspirational instead of being motivated by fear. The sense of accomplishment, the sense of satisfaction in knowing that we actually stepped up and we stopped lying to ourselves and we start to become honest to ourselves. And if you want an honest relationship, you have to be honest with yourself first. Have to be honest and in that sense of restoring the the integrity and the fibers of our being, everyone matters. Everyone matters, not one, not the other. Why is it that we are still holding people accountable for what happened 2000 years ago? Why is the energy still alive that happened 2000 years ago? Why does that still have such power? The past only has the power that we give it through our nows, that we give it permission to fuel, to fuel the fires that are exist within us because we are looking in and creating enemies because we are making enemies. There is good and there is bad. There is people who have, who have ulterior motives. There is people who have not good intentions and you will meet them in every relationship of your life. You may meet them as parents. You may meet them as love relationships. You may meet them as friends. You may meet them somewhere, but who and what you are and how you treat yourself before and after and what you step into, we all have a narcissistic tendency. We all have the need and the want to want to believe that we can fix somebody, that we can step in and we're going to make them a better person. That's if, you know, if we can convince somebody to come in and clean up our rooms and how many of that narcissistic tendency says, oh, you know, I just come in and clean up my mess for me, come in and clean up my room for me. And the other part of that is peace, peace. We can never be at peace as long as that's what we chase. And we cannot be at peace if we're at war in our minds and in our thoughts and in our systems. And if we keep that going, it is flowing. So bring that all into you, bring that into yourself, bring that into this space, into your heart, into your energy. What are you existing in? that keeps you at war? What expectations have you placed upon somebody else? Of course, we're moved into the Scorpio energy. And as we've shifted into Scorpio energy, Scorpio is water. It is tied to the water. It is tied to the tide. Scorpio can be as loving, but it can also bite. Scorpio is about intuition, has a keen sense of knowing. It has a keen sense of its survival instincts, what it needs to do to survive, what it needs to do to get by. And it also can see beyond the bullshit. So there's a reflection that is in it that says, I can see. And so it's able to void itself of emotions 
to clear out the emotional response to get done what needs to get done. And where we are right now is we need to do what needs to be done instead of looking back to the past. And if you're in a relationship and you're looking in and you're telling yourself over and over, oh, but I can see the potential. I can see how good they are. I can see what is possible. I know there's a good little boy, little girl in there. Yeah, but now you're looking at an adult. And that adult is who's in your you're in relationship with. You are not in relationship with the child. You are not in relationship with your inner child. You are in relationship with the adult who is here in this world. Who is accountable? Who is responsible? It's not the two-year-olds. It's not the five-year-olds. It is the adults. And it, this energy is about moving and shifting beyond and for us to learn the power of growing, evolving emotionally and spiritually, physically in our world so that we can light the fire, so that we can learn the being, the power of the archetype of adulting. It is the energy and the shift that it's time to be adulting. There is a powerful potential for us to use this energy for the best or for the worst of us. And the best of us is for us to become the best that we can be, to be the best human being that we can be, that we can activate the compassion within ourselves, the sense of self-consideration, self-value, self-worth, to start to see that I'm worthy of really truly diving deeply before I speak on something that I don't really know about looking on the sides of where I believe that that's my enemy. And I look in and say, who is really the enemy? Is it the narrative? Is it the, is it the two sides of us? Or is it what tried to divide and split us? Where is it coming from? And holding that sense of who's really accountable, who's really responsible. And if we really want to do the right things, we hold the right people in the right places accountable. And that includes ourselves. And the key to that, and it's in my first book, More Than Existing, was I had to really stop and look at, you know, my, why I, was, why I was so angry and what I was so angry about and what parent I was so angry with and, and look at it and just go, that little girl has placed a lot of expectation upon the woman who was my mother to be a specific way, to do the things that would make me happy. But what about her happiness? What about what made her happy? And that that was my, my so-called unmet childhood needs. And in the meantime, how I would treat other women was have ultimate level of respect and say, I understand it. I have compassion for you. I can see what's going on. But yet in my own relationship, I couldn't see clearly what was happening until I could see the enemy in me. And when I could see the reflection of, of coming back at me in a way of being judged and criticized, I realized I'm judging the woman based on the relationship of a little girl and a mother. And we are two grown adults. And I'm in really, I am a, a grown daughter. My mother was a grown adult, a grown woman. And so two women were in this relationship. And one of us, two of us would have to be accountable for what was our responsibility. The only responsibility was how I was going to show up and my actions, how I was going to be the change that I needed to see. And when I changed my view, my perspective, when I could see through the eyes of that little girl and have compassion for her, but recognizing there was so many other factors, there were so many other things happening, then I could see clearly that she was not my problem. I needed someone to be my problem so I could keep that energy alive. So I, it, because the anger is what motivated me. It was the, my driving force to me, keep trying to prove myself, to prove, I'll prove to you, I'll show you. Show what and to who? In the meantime, myself was getting lost further back. It is time for a change. We're here to learn to, to chart, to use this, to stop, to pause, to reflect, to slow down before we move forward. And to ask ourselves some serious questions. Who do I need to be today? What do I need to change? And it's time for us to clear the thoughts that hold us to the old thoughts and to, to recognize there's a possibility that is 
coming that says it's a chance and an opportunity for us to go a new direction, to look at what motivates us, what's our driving force, to clear the energy and to know that we our bedrooms can be like a bomb went off. Our whole world, our minds can be like a destruction of, of thoughts. It can be a destructive life that we live or we can stop, we can pause, we can clean it up. We can organize it, we can put it in place and we can mature as we are meant to mature and develop. And we can step into the self that is here in this present moment and become real and true and authentic to that self. Who do I need to be today that's going to benefit my tomorrows? Who's, you know, what kind of tomorrow do I want to see? And do I want to exist in? And what do I need and who and what do I need to be to see that change? And I don't have to, I don't have to become a part of the false narratives, the fear stories that I can be led by faith. And that's what you need to tell yourself. I don't need someone to divide me from myself with fear when I can really truly learn to trust this self. And our energy is about adulting. It is about growing up. It is about maturing. And it's time for us to mature and evolve this energy, this lifetime, and this world, because the children are watching. Much love.